Well, like I say good evening and welcome to Prayer, Praise, and Healing Night on this April the 13th, 2022. We thank God for your presence. We thank God for our members who have joined us on the parking lot. We thank God for our members who have joined us via Google Meet and or social media as well. To our family, friends, members, and supporters, e-members and e-partners, we thank God for you for joining us on Facebook as well. We ask if you would please to share tonight's uh, Facebook Live to your news feed so that others may hear the prayers for tonight so we thank god for this opportunity to be together what is prayer praise and healing night it's like we come together we pray and we praise god and we believe that he heals us and that he heals his people because we all stand in need of healing in some area of our lives it's not limited to our bodies or our physical health it can be our emotions may need to be healed there may have been some things that we've been grappling and wrestling with that god wants to deliver us from or to it may be something that we're facing in our minds that we need a solution for that God has the solution and he is the answer to the problems that are in your life. So we thank God on tonight. Let's thank God. God, we thank you on tonight. We praise and worship your holy and righteous name for you are the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Ancient of Days, the Great I Am, the God who cannot fail, the God who sees all and who knows, knows all, a God who does all things well. Your eyes run to and fro in the earth. You are our Savior, our great provider, the many-breasted one. You are El Shaddai. God, you're the eternal great I am. You are El Adiyana. We thank you, God. You're Jehovah's sick canoe. Thank you, Father, that you are the Lord of lords. You are the King of kings. God, you are God who perfects everything that concerns your people. You deliver us. You save us. You help us. You provide for us. You've written our names in the Lamb Book of Life. You've forgiven us of our many, many sins. You've always been there for us. You've never left us. You've never forsaken us. You've always saved us. You've always been there. You've always been our constant friend. Even when we weren't your friend, we say thank you, Lord God. You are a God who's always made a way out of no way for us. You provided for us. You supernaturally gave us favor. You blessed us to be in the land of the living. You let us have roof, a roof over our head, God. We have clothes to choose from. We have food in the pantry, we can decide what we want to eat. If we don't want to cook, God, we can order something from somebody and go pick it up. We say thank you, Lord God, because our lives don't have to be as good as they are, but we thank you and we appreciate you, God, for your bounty. We appreciate you for your help. We appreciate you for your guidance, for your wisdom, for your knowledge, your understanding, God. But God, it is in you that we move and that we have our being, and without you, we can't do nothing. So tonight, we say thank you and worship you in the beauty of your holiness, God, because you are great and you do miracles that are great. There is no God like you for God. You sit all in a category by yourself. You are the God who dwells in the corners of the north. You ride up on the wind. The clouds are the dust of your feet. You walk up and down the hot coals of the earth. You meted the world with a span. You put the stars and told them where to be. And you set the bounds of the sea. We say thank you, Lord God. You are the chief cornerstone. You are the rock that was hewed out of the mountain. We say thank you, God. You're the God that took the building and made it sweet for us. You took us in the land of our affliction and you blessed and props for the works of our hands and you caused and forget the affliction and the torment that we experienced that we say thank you on tonight, God. But God, there is no God like you. There will be no God like you for you are a jealous God. You're a God who sits all by himself. You rule and you super rule. You put down one and you set up another. Every good and perfect gift comes down from you. But you are the father of life. You are the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob on tonight. And we thank you, God, for being a God who's moving in our lives. You're moving in our collective lives. It's about, you're moving in the body of Christ. We say thank you, Lord God. But God, we thank you for being a banner of love over us, O oh, Heavenly Father. Being our sword, being our shield, being our buckler, teaching our hands to fight and our fingers to fight. We say thank you, Lord God. We thank you, God, that you've never failed us. You've always been there. Your compassions. They fail not daily. You loaded us with mercies, oh God. We say thank you on tonight, God. Because God, we know that everything that we have is because of you. Everything that we've overcome, everything that we've been more than a conqueror in, that we've become a champion in, it is because of you. Everything that we know, it is because of you. We say thank you, Lord God, that you make things lean in our direction, oh Heavenly Father. Thank you, God, that no childhood disease took us out. We're still here. We thank no adult disease took us out. You kept us from dangers both seen and unseen, known and unknown, heard and unheard. We say thank you, Lord God. You've given us traveling grace up and down these high roads, in the air and across the seas. We say thank you, Lord God, because God, you are God who is good. 
And you've done so many wonderful things in our lives that we cannot even take enough time to say it all, oh, Heavenly Father. If we had 10,000 tongues, it would not be enough time for us to tell you thank you enough. For you saving our sin sick souls, oh, Heavenly Father. For you saving us from the pits of a burning hell. For healing these bodies, God, that we haven't always taken the best care of. We thank you, oh, Heavenly Father, God, that you're still allowing us to be here. You still touch us with your hand and get us up in the morning. We say thank you, Lord God. You still guide us through our days. You blessed us with good jobs. You blessed us with good families and good spouses, good children. We say thank you, Lord God, because God, all the good things that we have in this world, all the good things that we enjoy in this world, they are because of you, Heavenly Father God, because you are a good God and your kindness, your goodness is all over the earth, oh Heavenly Father. We thank you, God, for lifting up our bow down here as being a God of peace, God, giving us that peace that passes all understanding. We say, Heavenly Father, we say thank you. Because, God, we know that we can't do anything by ourselves. We can't have anything by ourselves. We can't accomplish anything by ourselves. So we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration on tonight. But being a God that's always been right there, oh, Heavenly Father, God. Friends have left us. Parents have left us. Relatives have left us. Colleagues have left us. But you've always been right there. We say thank you, Lord God. For the many wonderful things that you have done, great God. Because, God, you are just that good. You've been just that kind, oh, Heavenly Father. And you don't forget about us. You said that a mother may forget her suckling child. A mother may forget her bottle baby, bottle fed baby. But you, God, will not forget about your children. So tonight... We turn and we say thank you on tonight, Heavenly God. We worship you, God, for who you are. We thank you for the many things that you've done. But you've been kind to us. You've been exceedingly kind to your children, oh, Heavenly Father. You've been exceedingly kind to the body of Christ. You've been exceedingly kind to this globe. We thank you, God, for bringing us through this pandemic, oh, Heavenly Father, God. You didn't let it take us out. We say thank you, Lord God. No sickness or disease called us to be in the grave on tonight. We say thank you, Lord God, that you've given us time to fix things. With you and to fix things with our fellow man, we say thank you, Lord God. God, we appreciate you and thank you, oh, Heavenly Father, God. And God, we just appreciate you and thank you so much on tonight, God, for who you are and for everything, God. We say thank you and give you all the glory, all the honor, all the credit, and all the adoration for the many wonderful things that you would do on tonight for your people. Amen. So again, tonight is prayer, praise, and healing night. We always enjoy prayer, prayer praise, and healing night because it is night that God talks to us and he reveals his will unto us and helps us to fight the things that are going on in our lives. Uh, Spirit of God gave me these prayers for a month ago and I thank God that they still work. Amen, not the prayers that will expire. Amen, a good prayer is a good prayer. Amen, so we thank God to our members. Uh, you received an electronic copy. Those of you who are watching us uh, via social media there on Facebook, you can just repeat the prayers after us after we get to the prayer points. But the prayers for tonight, they are for dealing with uncertainty. Because these are uncertain times that we uh, live in. You know, there's many rumors out here about different things that are going on. And it's different things happening and times have changed. And, and this is not the world that a lot of us are used to living in. But we're here. And so God still has us here for a reason. If he still has us here for a reason, we're still here for a purpose. And if we're here for a purpose, God expects us to do that purpose in spite of what's going on. Now, however, we must continue to function in wisdom and be wise as serpents as harmless and harmless as doves. We begin tonight, we'll look at Isaiah 33 and 6. It says, and wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times and the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his or our or her treasure. So God can give you wisdom on tonight which is what you're doing. He can give you knowledge, which is information, which will help you to be stable in the days that we're living in. These days that we're living in are not catching God off guard. God has not changed. His word has not changed. That's why he said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the word of God does not change. He says that the word, the word says that the flower fades and the grass withers, but the word of our God will stand. In other words, the word of God is consistently and it remains consistently true no matter what man does god's word always stays consistent deuteronomy 33 27 says the eternal god is our refuge that word refuge means a place that we can go in for shelter a place that we can go in to be safe and know that we are protected and underneath are the everlasting arms. I mean god has arms 
that do not fail. Glory to God. Once again, God has arms that do not fail. God has arms that do not fail. His arms don't get tired. His arms not like your daddy or your mama. He's not going to drop. His arms are everlasting. And he will thrust out the enemy from before you and you and will say, destroy them. In other words, God knows how to deal with your enemies. I say it again. God knows how to deal with your enemies. 2 Samuel 22 and 3. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. Anytime you see that word salvation, it's just talking about being saved. He is the one that saves me. My high tower and my refuge, my savior. You saved me from violence. In other words, God is a God that has many different ways to save your people. If you need a high tower, that means where people can't reach up to you, God can be that. If you need a refuge, a place you can run to and be saved, God will be that for you. If you need a shield, which means you need someone to be in between you and what you're facing and what's opposing you, God will be that as well. And he will save you from violence. How many times have you been somewhere you're supposed to be and something was happening, somebody started shooting or whatever the case may be, and you were able to escape safely? That was because of the hand of God. Psalm 99 says, The Lord will also be a refuge for the oppressed, and a refuge in times of trouble. There it is again. God will be a place that we can go to when we are oppressed. What, that means, what does oppression mean? When you're not being treated correctly, when you're not being treated fairly, and there also be a refuge in times of trouble. When things are not going the way they're supposed to be, we can still go to God. But why? Because we always have a friend in him. We always have a shelter in him. We always have a safe place in God. No matter where you are, you have a safe place in God. Psalm 46, 7, read these scriptures, of course, are from, the, from the King James Version. And say, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. In other words, God is the Lord over many that he will use to protect us. Once again, God is the Lord over many that he will use to protect us. And he again will be our refuge. And the God of Jacob is our refuge. In other words, the God of Jacob that talks about when Jacob was shysty when he wasn't in the will of God, before God changed his name, before he became Israel. I'm the God that will help you when you're figuring it out, when you're still trying to get things together. God will still be your refuge, a place that you can go to. Psalm 48, 3, God is known in her palaces for a refuge. That, that's another way what God is known for. He's known for being a place that his people can go and hide regardless of what the times are like, regardless of what you're experiencing, regardless of the instability that may be occurring. God is known for being a refuge. Psalm 59 and 16. But I will sing of your power. Yeah, I will sing aloud of your mercy in the morning. For you have been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. So God will not only be a place of refuge, he will also defend you. That's why you ought to sing to God. When you're by yourself, sing to God. It doesn't matter how you sound to him when you sing to God. You have some songs that you know that are dear to your heart, that mean something to you. Sing those songs to the Lord and let God know that you appreciate him because he has done many things and he has shown his greatness and his power to us over and over and over again. Psalm 62 and 8, trust in him at all times. You people pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us, Salah. What does that mean? There again, God is a place we can go to. We can trust God at all times and we can tell him everything. He's the only one that we can really trust with all of our secrets. He's the one that we can tell everything and know that it's not going anywhere. Because guess what? Whether we tell him or not, he already knows it. So if I were you in order to get that pressure and that weight off of yourself on tonight, tell God and take it to God in prayer and let him deal with it. Let him perfect it. Let him work on it. You've tried to work on it up long enough. Psalm 142 and 5. I said, I cried unto you, Lord. I said, you are my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Just showing you different scriptures that show us that we can go to God. And God is our safe place as Christians. God is our safe haven as Christians. He is that, I want to say, that fortress on tonight. That, that castle that we can go to and know that we are protected. Proverbs 14, 14, excuse me, 26, it says, In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children 
will have a place of refuge. So all these different scriptures keep telling us the same thing, that God will be that place of refuge. Hebrews 6 and 18, that by two immutable things, is that it is impossible for God to lie. My God. In other words, God is not a liar. That is not his role. That is not his measure. That is not his way. That is not his pattern. That is not a value of his. Whatever you want to call it, God is not a liar. That it is impossible for God to lie. You say, we might have a strong consultation for who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. In other words, we have a hope in God regardless of what goes on around us. We have access to the hope that God provides to us. Jeremiah 16 and 19, it says, O oh Lord, my strength and my forces and my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentiles will come unto you from the ends of the earth and will say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies and vanity and things whereon there is no profit. In other words, God, you are strength. We can get strength from God. We can get help from God. And he is our fortress and our refuge. There's that word again, in the day of affliction, in that day when you feel like you're being beaten up. In that day when you feel like you can't go on. In that day when you feel like you want to stop. We can go to God. Because there's a place in him where he can build us up. There's a place in him where he will give us strength. There's a place in him where he will help us like only he can. And then at Daniel 2.21 it says, And he changes the times and the seasons. Glory to God. He removes kings and set up kings. He gives wisdom unto the wise and not to them that know Understanding. In other words, God is a God who can change things for you. God can bless you when it seems like your blessing ought to be out of season. What does that mean? God can bless you at a time that you think not. God can move and can and will, excuse me, move on a time, move in a time when you think not. All you have to do is believe him that God will help you in uncertain times. God will be with you when things are not stable. God will be with you. When things are rocky. And that's the only way that we make it is that a God who's stable, a God who is consistent, a God who is persistent can help us. A God with everlasting arms that don't get tired. He will carry us even in the uncertain times. Psalm 40 and 2 says, He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my going. In other words, God brought me up out of a bad, dark place that I couldn't get myself out of. Anytime you see that word pit, it's talking about a deep hole that you can't climb out of, that there is no way out of for you on your own, that you need some divine intervention, that you need some help. And out of the miry clay, that miry clay is not just regular uh, clay when it's just in a wet and damp state. That miry clay means some other stuff on that as unbecoming. It doesn't look good. It's slippery and it's slimy, but God will pull us out of that as well. And he set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. In other words, God will take you from that which is unstable. He will take you from that which is certain and put you in a place where things are stable. Say it again. God will take you from a place that's unstable, that's shaky, that's rocky, and put you in a place that is stable. And that is fortified and consistent. And saying you established my goings. In other words, what does that mean? That means that God will help you in what you have to do and what you're going toward. So God does not want us to feel alone in days of uncertainty. He does not want us to feel alone in days when things are inconsistent, when the patterns that we see remind us of, of, of us of something old or or something from the past. He wants to help us. And he wants to help all of us. Not just me. Not just you. Everybody listening. And even those who may hear it later on. God wants to help you. And don't ever think that God does not want to help you. It can get thick. It can get lonely. It can get real and it can get dark. But I promise you, God will be there with you. And he will bring you out and help you when you can't help yourself. And he will guide you when you can't feel your way. It's 
take my word for it. I know what God can do. I've seen him move. He's moved for me. He's moved for others. But I've experienced it in my own personal life. But he's pulled me out when I didn't know I was in. He's pulled me up when I didn't know I was down. He brought me to the light when I didn't know I was in the dark. So I say to you tonight, God can and will and does still save. And he does still help us even when things are shaky. Even when things are unknown and unpredictable and different, God will help us on tonight. So I ask you to be real please on tonight. If you have these prayers, we're gonna pray. And how do I know these prayers and how do I know that this is what God wanna deal with on tonight? God leads us by what we are experiencing. And so if I'm experiencing, I know that you're experiencing it too. But the good news is that we have hope in Jesus the Christ. And that we have hope in him. And that we have help in him. And that he cannot fail. And he will not leave you destitute. He will not leave you homeless. He will not leave you as an orphan. We have a good father in God. We have a good friend in Jesus. We have a good brother in Jesus. And he will be there for us consistently. Repeat after me. I'm a child of God. I am saved. And confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. God lives on the inside of me. I'm packing a conquering spirit. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And you, O oh Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. I am covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. These are the declarations here to fight uncertainty. Repeat after me after you will, please. Oh God, hear me when I call out to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh Lord of hosts, thank you for being with us. You are Emmanuel. God our Father, give us long life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh God, bring us out of our distress. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, for being a refuge in uncertain times. Thank you, God, for being our portion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, that you are the refuge of all your children. Thank you, most high God, for bringing us out of the harbor pit, placing our feet on solid ground and establishing where we are going. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh God, thank you that wisdom and knowledge provide stability for us in these uncertain times. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh God, change the times and the seasons to help us, your people, in Jesus Christ's name. Dear Lord, thank you for speaking peace to the winds and waves of our lives that seek to blow us away in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, our Father, thank you for sustaining us in spite of what is going on in Jesus Christ's name. Oh God, look out for us like only you can in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My family and I are covered with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of God anchors us and holds us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for letting us walk the water when things are uncertain in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh God, thank you for stabilizing our minds in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We come against panic attacks 
In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Peace is our portion in Jesus Christ's name. Peace is our portion in Jesus Christ's name. Peace is our portion in Jesus Christ's name. The peace of God that passes our comprehension is ours in Jesus Christ's name. God, our Father, thank you for being our defense in troubled times in Jesus Christ's name. Thank you, Holy Father, for changing the times and the seasons for us. You remove kings and set up kings to help us, your children, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, cause your wisdom to stabilize us in Jesus Christ's name. Thank you, Father, that your hope is an anchor for our souls in Jesus Christ's name. O oh Lord, hide us in the cleft of the rock in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, that you will never leave us or forsake us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're anxious for nothing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh God, when our hearts and minds are overwhelmed, lead us to the rock that is higher than us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, we trust you at all times in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Dear God, our Father, redeem our souls in peace from every battle that is against us in Jesus Christ's name. Thank you, God, our Father, for making turbulence work in our favor in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, our Father, thank you for making us wise as serpents and harmless as doves in these uncertain times in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We always sleep peacefully in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, our Father, for feeding us and providing for us in uncertain times in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh God, open our eyes that we may see the allies that you have for us in uncertain times. Our mental strength is renewed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the stripes of Jesus Christ, our mind and our emotions are healed in Jesus Christ's name. Oh God, bring our minds out of darkness into the marvelous light in Jesus Christ's name. O oh, great light of God, arise in the darkness of our minds in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, God, lift up our bowed down heads in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, our Father, fill us with joy and peace when we have depression and anxiety. O oh, God, send soldiers to fight for our minds in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We will live, not die, and publish the gospel in Jesus Christ's name. Jesus Christ, the great physician, mend our broken hearts. Oh God, if our hearts are stony, replace them with flesh ones in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our heart trusts you, God, and we are not afraid. Lord Jesus Christ, remove heaviness from our heart in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Victory over depression is all of ours in Jesus Christ's name. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father God, we thank you, God. We repent of the sin of ungratefulness on tonight, Heavenly Father. Forgive us, O oh God, forgetting that it was you that made us. Forgive us for forgetting that it was you that protected us and provided for us and gave to us. Forgive us, O oh God, for not remembering that by your hand we are fed and that you are the God who has kept us and will keep us, O oh Heavenly Father God. God, we thank you for these, your people. Thank you, God, for ministering to all of our hearts on tonight. 
Thank you, God, for sunshine in our minds and sunshine in our bodies and sunshine in our hearts on tonight. Thank you, God, that the burden is lighter on tonight because of you and your son, Jesus the Christ, and the sweet Holy Spirit. God, help us. And we thank you for your help. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, God, for being there. And you've never left us. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the credit. We give you all the adoration. And we appreciate you, God, from the bottom of our hearts. And forgive us again, oh God. We thank you, God. Everything that we have is because of you. And we worship you and thank you for it. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. If you're not saved on tonight, you need to be saved. You need to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You can be saved and know it. He's available for you on tonight. He's accessible to you on tonight. He is the greatest friend of all. He's the best friend you could ever have. Why? Because he'll always be right there. He will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. So you can boldly say, that means confidently say, the Lord is your helper. And then say, I will not fear what man can do unto me. God wants to save you on tonight. He wants to heal you on tonight. He wants you to come back to him if you've walked away. He wants you to come back to him. If you and God fell out, if you and God are having an issue, if you and God are having a beef, he wants you to come back to him. For he says, come let us reason together. And there's no better time than the present to get right with God. There's no better time than the present to accept Jesus Christ in your heart. So he said, yes, that's me. I desire to be saved on tonight. I want to get back in right standing with God. I know I need Jesus Christ for myself. I know I need to be saved. I know I need to get back in a good place with God on tonight. I realize that and I want to fix it tonight. That's a good place to be. We're going to pray a prayer and I can help you with the saying part. For the Bible says that we accept Jesus Christ by two things. Saying with our mouth, which means talking and saying it. And then believing in our heart, which means believing with our spirit, man, the spirit part of our being. So I can help you with the saying part, the talking part, but I can't help you with the believing part. For you have to believe God with your own heart, like I had to believe him from my own myself. So let's pray this prayer together. If you desire to be saved, if you want to come back to God, you want to get your relationship with God straight, you want to fix it with God, it's one prayer that we pray for both of those. And that prayer says, dear God. I know thou Jesus Christ that I am lost. I thank you, God, for sending your son Jesus to Christ to die for me and getting him up again for my justification. Jesus Christ, thank you for dying for my sins, cleansing me of my sins and all unrighteousness and getting up again for me. Jesus Christ, I confess you as my Lord. I confess you as my Savior. Sit on the throne of my heart. And I want to serve you the rest of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. So that I too may bear witness. And tell about the good things you've done for me. Dear Jesus Christ. Thank you that I'm a new creation. I'm a new creature because of you saving me. And I thank you for saving me. You are my Lord Jesus. You are my Savior. And you are my King. Thank you for saving me in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And just like that, you are saved. And if you got saved on tonight, we welcome you to the family of God. We encourage you to read your Bible or your Bible out from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Or what version? Get a version of the Bible that you understand, that you can comprehend so you can learn and know for yourself what the Word of God says you can have and can have, what you can do and what you can't do and how God intends to bless your life and the purpose he has designed for your life. And then become a part of the church, of a church that's going to teach you the word of God, preach the word of God to you, and teach it to you where you can apply it in your lives so you can have victory. And so you can always know that you are a champion and God has made you to overcome. And also we encourage you to get water baptized. Water baptism doesn't save us. It simply is an outward show that we receive Jesus Christ as our savior on the inside of us. If you want to be spirit filled on tonight, God wants to fill you with his spirit. And the evidence of that is by speaking with other tongues. 
So I'm going to pray for you tonight for you to be spirit filled right there where you are. Let the spirit of God. And it's a simple and easy prayer that I'm going to pray just bow your heads right there where you are. Lift your hands toward heaven. Just as a sign of submission. There's not anything magical about it. But God will fill you with his Holy Spirit just for you believing and you asking. God, I thank you tonight for your people. I thank you, God, that you said that you would visit your people and that you would fill them with the Holy Ghost. You would fill them with the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in other tongues and you would give them power from on high. So God, I thank you for giving your people the power that comes with being filled with the Holy Spirit. I thank you all they released their prayer language on tonight. God, fill them right now. And God, we thank you that they are spirit-filled and they release their prayer language in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, your prayer language, that's a language that you've never been taught to speak in before. It's a language of the Spirit. And so it ain't a class that you went to school for or took a night class for or some pig Latin that you learned in the neighborhood or something like that. No, it's a language of the Spirit. And it may sound like gibberish. It may sound like baby talk. Normally, it starts out with one word. But every day, every time you think about it, you repeat that word. And over time, you get another word. And then you get another word. And then you get another word. The Bible says that when we pray in the Spirit, we build up our most holy faith. So if you got spirit filled on tonight, we say welcome to another level. Or welcome to another place and believing and walking with God. Because when we pray in the Spirit, we know that we're praying the perfect, holy will of God. So Pastor and I, we thank God for you on tonight. Those of you who joined us via social media, we thank God for you. We thank God for your presence. We thank you for your prayers, your participation, and your support. To those of you who support us financially, we thank God for you. We set ourselves in agreement with you for God's best and that abundance is always yours in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that God meets and exceeds every need that you have and that you pay your bills on time and ahead of time. So we thank God for you. We look forward to seeing you Sunday at 8.30 a.m. Amen. We'll be right here. Amen. As we celebrate Resurrection Sunday, which is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Tag somebody so they can see tonight's prayer, so they can pray these prayers, so they can be free tonight as well. Tag someone so they can be blessed by these prayers as well. But we thank God for you, Pastor, now praying for you. So as you go, tell the world about Jesus Christ. And tell them about his love. Let them know that Jesus saves, Jesus heals, and Jesus prospers. We'll see you Sunday morning at 8.30. We thank God for you. Amen.